Okay, so today we're looking at a 92 Chrysler New Yorker. I think it has like 70,000 miles on it. Basically it was driven to church on Sunday and Wednesday. And that's about it. So what we're doing today is, this is a, uh, I believe a Bendix 10 ABS system. It's one of the first ABS systems that Chrysler came up with. And it is terrible. Um, there was a recall on it. And Chrysler would pay for the repair work. Plus they would um, replace everything on the ABS system for a year to, or 10 years to 100,000 miles. Also they'd replace the pump for, um, for ever. But unfortunately, they don't make the pump anymore. That's what brings us to today's uh, little exercise. What we're doing is we're replacing an ABS system. This thing right there. All that mess in here. And we're going to replace it with the power. We're going to replace the power booster the master cylinder assembly, proportioning valve, miscellaneous flanges, check valve here, and the pedal. So I um, was looking off uh, a website, newyorker.com, and he started it first, so I thought I'd try to do it. First thing I started to do is to remove some of these uh, connectors in here, and then uh, I removed this and let the brake fluid drain all the way out. Next thing I did is I went in here and I started tearing apart the dash because that's what he recommended to drop the steering column. As you can see the steering column is dropped. In order to get all this mess out there's a bunch of screws uh, up under here as you can imagine. Uh, there's some screws across the top through here that need to be taken out. Um, there's a couple screws that you get by going in between the two pieces. That's the mess of trim stuff that's been taken off. And then ultimately it comes down to four bolts. The four bolts are one, two, uh, three, four for your steering column and then it drops out. Now what he did is he removed the entire steering column and uh, disconnected all the wiring and all the, the gear selector thing I think is that. Um, but I'm not doing that because I was able to get in behind here to the pedal by just hanging it here. I know that's a little scary, but I went ahead and did it because I'm not too worried. So I was able to get to the back where the booster is going to bolt through the firewall. You can see there's four bolts. Uh, let's see if I can get a finger in there. There's, there's one. There's two. Three. Or also, there is a uh, there are some bolts that hold the pedal in. Uh, let's see if I can even have that. Anyways, they're up in here. Uh, there's an axle that goes through um, that holds that pedal on, and also it attaches to uh, that big eye hook that thing right there and that hooks up via clip and i'll show you what that clip looks like about associated with the brake pedal see i've already swapped over my uh pedal from the new yorker it was in a little better shape and plus it has this nice little bezel on it uh here's the clip that you need to remove or on this clip actually pry up on that you put a screwdriver under that piece and pry up and then the clip slides out this way. So that was sort of tricky. This one you unbolt from the frame under here. This is like a, I think that might be either 13 or 15. Then you hold this with a 7 16 inch wrench and then everything pulls out uh, that direction. So, all right, now once, now that I've got all that loose, um, you can see the whole assembly starting to move. Now I haven't detached any of my brake lines or anything. 
was kind of hoping I would get a little more space. Here's some a brake line coming in here. Uh, there's this thing. They recommend on the website to just uh, cut them off. You'll have enough excess to reflant the ends of them. I guess in summary, what I'm trying to do is convert from ABS to manual. Next thing is to try to pull this thing out. So I'm going to probably cut the brake lines first with a pair of clippers and then I'll reflange them later. And we're back. Okay, so what I did is I went through and I clipped the brake lines off their four locations. And then there's one way underneath under there that you can't hardly see. And now I'm going to attempt to take this thing out. It's like I'm still plugged in maybe right here. Uh, you can see it's starting to come out the right through there starting to come out need to figure out what's holding it in maybe that uh, maybe it's sitting here too oh there we go that looks better uh, don't know what to do about that something's in there I don't know where I'm connected to electrically I might uh, Give it a shot. Let's see the foam pad back here. See the daylight leaking through. So this is connected somewhere. I don't know what that is. Some sort of sensor or something. I need to disconnect this wire here. Looks like I can pull that out. I'm not sure it's necessary, but yeah. So that came out. I'm not sure I needed to do that. Looks like this thing is up there, so I'm gonna have to pick it up with two hands. Okay, so I had to take off some of these electrical uh, connections here. These two, and then. There was a sensor of some kind that had to unscrew from the bottom um, that went under here somewhere. So I think I'm going to be able to get it out now. Okay, so there seems to be this pin underneath, uh, you know, what I would equate to a master cylinder. That holds this whole master cylinder thing on. So I'm going to pull that. Hopefully, there's still this. Okay, so in order, uh, I had to pull out the master th cylinder thing, and in order to get it out, there's three plastic pins that go sideways through here that all need to be pulled out. You can see they go through here, here, and here. This is a, the thing upside down. So once you get that out, then that'll free up this whole wire assembly that's tucked in here and between that. So that's what was holding me down, keeping me from... Uh, pulling this thing out so that's it see over here are the connections for the brake lines all right so I'm gonna try to yank this so yet another wires this is where the ground hooks up to the uh, whole ABS system so I'm gonna yank that out of there see that's in a terrible spot probably was corroding down there so, still got to rescue the wiring harness. Okay, so I've got it removed. This is the hole where she, where she went. Uh, this is the wiring harness that they say gets in the way. It looks like it's tied in down here, so I may have to loosen that up. Uh, then, uh, these are the brake lines, of course, coming from parts asunder. And then uh, this is another brake line. And I don't know where the... Uh, let's see, that's one, two, three. Wow, I wonder if that is my or fourth brake line. I guess it is. Can't be anywhere else. It's kind of odd. I don't know where it goes through or what it's doing. I don't know what that mess is right here. 
high, this is what? Warning high pressure brake fluid, so. Uh, I don't know if I need to take this out. Is that part of ABS? That is a good question. Okay, so what this is, is a, uh, this is the ABS pump. I guess this is the part that Chrysler would replace for free. Looks like they've really protected it. They put this cover on it. Apparently, there's supposed to be only one bolt, and the only bolt I see is that one right there. So, take it off, see if that whole pump assembly comes out. And I seriously doubt it, but who knows? We'll give it a shot. Okay, so believe it or not, this whole assembly, this whole thing here, is held on with one bolt. Here is where it attached down there. That whole thing is gone. Okay, so in addition to uh, pulling this wiring strip up to get this in there, um, to get the booster in there, I had to uh, detach the plenum, and that involved quite a few bolts. Uh, you have to uh, get this EGR tube here, that's the one I forgot, and then uh, it's these bolts across the top, right here, one behind the coils, and then one there to loosen it up. Probably didn't need that one. So, oh, also there's one on the back. That you can't forget about right in that area. A little bit harder than I thought to get that in there, but she's in. <laughs> 